Welcome back. Well, it's time for an important corporate conversation now. Uh, Mangalam, my co-anchor, caught up with Sushant Dash, uh, who's the CEO of Tata Starbucks, to get a sense of the company's financials, consumer preferences, and began by asking him how is the company likely to end this financial year. Listen in to excerpts from that conversation. So we should be good. Uh, as you said, the last two years for us has been about rapid expansion. If you look at it, uh, in the last two and a half years, we have nearly doubled our store count right. in three years' time. We did 50 stores, we then did 70 odd stores last year, and hopefully we'll break that number this year. Uh, we are 410 stores as we speak. We opened a new store this morning in Varanasi, uh, which also takes us to now, I think, 60 odd cities. So it is not just about the store expansion, it's also about the places that have, we have been to. Typically, quick service restaurants do anywhere between 18 to 20 percent as EBITDA margins. Starbucks, we know, is profitable. So what's the kind of EBITDA margins that you guys operate at? Again, I will not share numbers, but as you know, as you rightly said, we, we, we became, we, we were cash profit for a while now. Yeah. We became profitable at an EBITDA level last year, which we declared. And I think that was something that was actually very uh, a sense of pride and in some ways it also gave us the confidence that we now know the model well because it was it came on the back of rapid expansion right. it came on the back of a contraction in the base numbers because of the previous two three years in terms of covid but irrespective of all of that to come back grow stores invest behind much higher number of stores and still uh, crack the profitability uh, parameter, I think, gave us the confidence that we now know uh, enough about this market and how where we want to go. But the rapid expansion plan is still on. You'll be opening one store every three days for the next two and a half years, as I can see. What's the kind of uh, investment that you're making per store? Roughly two and a half to three crore. Again, I will obviously not share numbers, but. For us, the store is what is most important. Uh, and we are proud of what we achieve in that. Having said that, we obviously understand the financial guardrails and we'll continue to have a strict control on that so that we continue to be profitable and you know get the right returns. How is the revenue mix of a store typically for Starbucks? What proportion comes in from hot beverages, how much of it comes in from cold beverages. We're speaking around summer right now, we've right. launched a new product. Right. What proportion comes in from food and in that as well, how much is sweet, how much of it is savory? So, in terms of numbers, uh, if, I, if I look at it, it differs from season to season, as you yeah. said rightly. Uh, it also depends in terms of markets. You know, certain markets, in the initial stages we see there is more preference for blended beverages, uh, which is our frappuccinos. Yeah. And as the market matures and there are more people who come in and understand coffee, there is a movement towards espresso, okay. right? So that is the typical pattern. So in that, in some sense, because Mumbai is the oldest market, we would have more of espresso drinkers here, and hence people having more of Americanos or uh, the lattes, the flat whites. We are a tea drinking nation. Coffee penetration is still 25% amongst among the effluent or people that we are going to. So we need to create the category. And when you are creating the category, the easier drink to have is a blended beverage or a frappuccino. So w the reason why I ask you this question is because uh, I'm sure gross margins differ from category to category. So with you adding more stores, initial sales being from the blended category, is that good or bad for your margins? So, so I, I, I think, as I said, we now know what it takes to succeed. So we built it into our financial modeling in terms of how a market will mature and where, and obviously you have done enough in terms of the middle of the PNL and the COGS to ensure that irrespective of this mix changes and in terms of the dynamics, you still maintain your financial guardrails. The competition right now. I mean, at the premium end, there are these artisanal brands which are perceived to be at a much better coffee quality level. At the lower end, there are a lot of these brands which are rapidly expanding, some of them being funded recently as well. Above and beyond all of this, when people are expanding, your rentals increase, the availability of uh, real estate for you to expand the way you want to decreases. Right. So first and foremost, I always believe competition is good. 
Uh, That's the, the mother root statement that everyone makes before speaking yes. about competition. Competition, right? And, and in our case, more so because, as I said, we have to grow the category. Right. If we, and and if you have more players who are doing interesting work, then the category will grow faster, and it's good for us. Uh, the second thing is, as long as we continue to do what we are good at and create our differentiator, I think we are in a good place. So we need to concentrate in terms of what makes us the brand we are and why we have been successful. So let's uh, talk about summer 2024 and FI25 itself. Uh, what is it that you're targeting? In terms of store opening, of course, we know that 1,000 store by FI28 sort of target and that calculating the numbers would be around 3,000, 3,500 crores in terms of top line that time. Give us a glide path to that. I think we will continue to do in many ways what we have been doing. Uh, as you rightly said, we'll continue to expand, we'll continue to grow stores, and I think we'll continue to grow stores both by opening newer markets and in terms of continuing to open in the markets that we exist. So that is the store expansion plan, and as we have already stated, by 2028, we will be uh, a thousand stores. Uh, we today have around 4,000 odd partners, 4,300 partners. We will double that. We will be at 8,600, 8,700 partners. Mm. We will continue to innovate a lot more in terms of food. What proportion currently comes in from food? Uh, in terms of uh, our food would be around 17-18% of, of our mix right now. Food attach is important for us. and. There's a lot of work that has gone in, in terms of how we look at it and what we need to do, understanding from a consumer point of view. So you will see a lot more of innovation in terms of food. Uh, we will see more beverages. Uh, okay. that, that, and we keep launching beverages. Refreshers is a uh, clear indication. We will see how, what more we can do. We will also start to celebrate Indian occasions more. We will now have a more 360 degree approach to Indian and community festivals. Uh, so, so those are some of the things, and digital. How many more reserves are you planning to open this year? That is, that is, that is good. So reserves, uh, you know, in terms of reserves, we converted our first store fort to a reserve, uh, and it has given us good traction, good result. Uh, so we will do more of that. Uh, we hope to do two more uh, in the coming year. Uh, we, 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 will, we, we are still figuring that out, but. Delhi, Mumbai are prime considerations as of now. You are on track to do 1,000 stores by 2028. The current revenue run rate per store continues into 2028 as well. When you have 1,000 stores, the operating leverage uh, will start to kick in because now you've uh, figured out the model of success out here. And with all of this, you will continue to maintain your leadership in the market as it were. Is, uh, would that be a... That would be a fair assessment. Right, that was some insightful conversation coming in from the CEO of Tata Starbucks, part of the listed entity of Tata Consumer, uh, saying that they will double their store count every uh, uh, in, in the next uh, three years or so from 410 to over 1,000. Importantly, they will focus on food and launch a lot of uh, new non-coffee refreshers as well. But